Sweden's identity as a humanitarian superpower is under attack. No faith at all can be put in the government to solve this situation. It has proudly taken in more refugees per capita than any other European country. But with 190,000 arriving in 2015 alone, the Swedish government has taken the exceptional step of introducing border checks. Rising migration to Sweden has been shadowed by a surge in anti-immigrant violence. We don't know whether they hate color or whether they hate religion, they just hate. The Sweden Democrats, a party that emerged from the neo-Nazi movement and campaigns on an anti-immigration platform, is now the country's third largest party, and its support is growing. We, we are actually the elite in the society, but people just don't know it yet. We joined the Sweden Democrats' radical youth wing, the SDU, at their annual conference to find out what they stand for and meet their growing ranks. Yes, do. We arrived just as they were electing a new chairperson. What's happening now? The, the election of the chairman, and now they're... Announcing it. If we let in 100, 150,000 a year, then it becomes a very big part of the Swedish population. And you think it's enough to be a cultural threat? Yes, it is. If a Syrian came and, say, remained halal and, and went to the mosque yeah. and, and, and celebrated Ramadan rather than Christmas, is that by itself problematic? I would say that's a problem, yes. What about yeah. Jewish holidays? I would say that's not a part of the Swedish tradition right now. How but, could but, you be Jewish? Well, the Sweden? problem is, say that we have... a. 10, 20, hundreds of different religions that all demands their own holidays, all demands their own way of uh, making the food at schools, at works. You can see for yourself, it wouldn't work. Except for it already does work in countries like the UK, in the US, and in fact they have thriving multicultural societies. Yeah, but they, really ha they have a different society. Can you see you're treading quite a fine line to sounding racist? No, I don't think so. Jessica Olsen was a controversial choice. The main party consider her too nationalistic and cut their ties with the SDU following her election. What is that? It was a Roman legendary dagger called uh, Champagne. It was the most common assassination weapon in the Roman Empire. You realise that in a moment of political sensitivity, that's 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 quite the message. We we are actually the elite in the society, but people just don't know that yet. <laughs> but why do you guys all dress up so strange? We want to, to do a good impression. It's respectful. Okay. Because we don't want to look, some, uh, at, uh, look like a filthy Romanian or something. So. <laughs> <laughs> some guy earlier who said, I dress in a suit because I don't want to look like a dirty Romanian. You don't find that kind of stuff offensive? Yeah, I do. You always attract douchebags. All parties does that. Talking about immigration doesn't have to be mean racism. It could be actually economics, because how many people can you help if you run out of money? The conference was an unsettling experience. Many in the SDU had expressed a heartfelt concern that Sweden's welfare and social system was unable to cope with any more refugee arrivals. But there was something disturbing about their opposition to multiculturalism. Violence against immigrants was on the rise, with a wave of arson attacks in asylum centres. Panic and confusion at the scene of a deadly attack. At this school in Sweden, a young man wielding what appeared to be a sword burst in Wednesday morning, killing two and injuring two others. I can't believe it. It happened in Trollhättan. We're from Iraq. The people here live in peace and love peace. We're so, so, so sad. The attacker picked his victims according to ethnicity, killing a Somali student and an Iraqi teacher's assistant. More than 90% of the pupils in Cronin School come from migrant families. Trollhattan's Swedish-born residents rarely go into the town's migrant areas. You're Swedish, or where no, are you born? From Kosovo. How long have you lived in Sweden? 23 years. Do you think there is now more racism in Sweden today than there was 23 years ago? Too much, today is too much. When it happens something, yeah. they just say, it's refugees, it's uh, some... Uh, immediately, it's yes, refugees. Immediately. How does that feel? 
it hurts. Yeah. If I am a Swedish, you are from another country. No, I don't want to be in France with you. I don't play with his children. Why? Everywhere we went in Trollhattan, people told us that segregation between the Swedish and migrant communities was a major problem. Trollhattan's Sunni Mosque is a few doors down from the Cronin School. There have been arson attacks on asylum centres all yeah. over Sweden. Yes. Why do you think this is? Well, it's, it's very easy to, to know it. We have a, a new party here. Mm. We call it Sverige Demokraterna. The Swedish Democrats, yeah. yeah. And if you look at the Facebook at the site they have, mm. they, and in the parliament, they say it. Mm. We don't have any uh, immigration here in Sweden. It's enough. Mm. Give them out, take mm. them out. Even if the Sweden Democrats aren't responsible for the violence themselves, do you think their message is somehow responsible? Absolutely. And that's what I am fighting for, really. Mm. Not what's happening here. <laughs> I was talking after the ceremony with the father, and he said the only one thing. If he know us, he never done that. But he don't know us. Having heard Haj Ahmed's argument for a more integrated society, we went back to Gothenburg to see Joachim Ishiden, a former SDU leader, and his girlfriend, Sarah Engström, to hear why they thought multiculturalism was such a bad idea. I, I don't have any urge at all to see the world. No? Why is that? Really. Well, uh, it, it doesn't interest me in that way. You've always lived in Gothenburg? Yes. You're born here? Yes. And you feel like it's changed since you were a kid? It has. I don't want to go out alone when it's dark. Yeah. I don't want to go home when there's no one with me. What do you think, though, about people who are taking more extreme action? Can you understand the, the violence? They're now like something, an I arson attack I every two to I can't understand why they set fire to asylum yeah. um, centers, but um, I understand the frustration. And also from a political perspective, it just strengthens my belief that no faith at all can be put in the government to solve this situation. So what can be done? Well, we just need a new political leadership in the country. Mm -hmm. It's that easy. Something drastically has, has to be done. Joachim and Sarah agreed to show us some of the Gothenburg neighbourhoods they believe have suffered most from Sweden's growing migrant and refugee arrivals. But they were reluctant to engage with the locals. It's not very often that you hear Swedish here. What are the languages that you would hear spoken here most? I have no idea. Arabic, maybe? <laughs> Any first impressions? If you would come here as a tourist, I think it would be hard to judge what country you're in. This isn't Sweden for me. No, not at all. I would think you'd want to understand a bit more this culture that is among you. I, I don't know what is, there is more to understand. I don't think that uh, talking to uh, one individual uh, would broaden the perspective very much from a political point of view. But if you actually talk to people, surely like, you know how you were saying, like when you knock on doors, and this is what makes the Sweden Democrats different from other political parties, mm -hmm. surely it then makes sense to also talk to all of the community, which, whether you like it or not, includes people from other cultures? No, of course. I mean, I don't have anything against it, but I don't think that from a political point of view, yeah. that talking to, uh, to uh, uh, a decent guy or an undecent guy out here uh, would change anything. What are your initial thoughts? Because I don't have anything else to compare it to. I'm in a Sweden. bit scared. You're a bit scared? You wouldn't feel safe to go much further on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not far out. Doesn't want to go any further? Do you feel threatened by the SDU? They don't want more people coming to their country. That's mm. why they are making some of propaganda, some of uh, avoiding this reason. You will mm. not come to this country to afraid, you know that. That's why so they are making this. So if there are arson attacks against asylum centers, you're not going to want to go to that country? Uh, some sort. Uh, that's the theory. And so you're afraid, Sarah, that if they found out that you were with the Sweden Democrats, that they could be violent with you. Yes. And I mean, we have. <laughs> in uh, got, several different ways. We have gotten beaten a few times through the years. So you, you're worried for some serious kind of assault? Yeah, sure. Would it not be better to actually have a community, a Swedish community, that was more integrated? It would, it would have been a lot better to uh, uh, 
to have a more restrictive uh, immigration policy from the beginning, of course. So you don't think there's any way that it could have been actually a successful thing for Sweden to have like a lot of people who could actually make the society richer? Well, uh, no, I, I think that this is what we see now is uh, multiculturalism in action, and uh, this is what uh, we should have expected from in the first place.